Hola a todos and welcome to another video of our series of Julia videos for programmers or as I call it, the Julia Journey Juggling Jargons Joyfully series. In this video, which might have been split into more parts, I'm going to talk about the development of a new package in Julia. It is a larger video because building a package has many moving parts and I want to do it most of it in a single run. Uh, you're going to find it very easy compared to other languages. Uh, but of course, you still have to do a lot of things to make your package installable in other places. Let me know if you release a new package using the information here. You can post your package in the comments with a short description. It might be useful for other people to know that uh, this video worked. Or if you found something that is not up to date, you can also leave it in the comments and I can uh, maybe add to the description. Okay, so let's start actually implementing things here. I'm going to start copying a little bit of what we had done in the previous video with a little, uh, with some modifications. Okay, so here we have it, the abstract type, abstract dice row, the possible sides, it's now a uppercase. These also come for consts inside the module to be uppercase. Um, the row defined only for the uh, documentation purposes, function row end. Uh, you have the struct dice, which is an abstract dice row. You have constructor dice, you also have internal constructor. You have the function row for a given dice. And you have a rainfall of dice struct, uh, which implements uh, multiplication between a uh, number and a dice. And you can row a rainfall of dice. So here, the first thing that we're going to do before we actually start using this at all is to use a package called revise. So the package revise is essential for the development of Julia packages. So the revise automatically reloads your code when you make modifications. Because of the way that Julia works, if I just say using dice rolls right now, the dice rolls module would be loaded already. So if I make modifications here, I can't easily reload the, the package dice rolls. The normal thing to do would be to close Julia and open again. Uh, but package revise ha exists for a few years already. And when you use revise, again, this is something that you want to install to your global environment. Automatically, any modification that we make to dice rolls, they will pour over to our REPL. So now I'm going to use dice rolls. Uh, Pre-compiling dice rolls is, is these dice rolls right here. If I say dice rolls dot possible dices. You can see this is a seven element vector. If I add another one, like 32, automatically it uh, updated. There is an issue here, of course, this is a const, so it should not be modified. Uh, but yeah, that's just for example. So when you have a Julia module, it, it doesn't automatically export anything. So there is no row function, there is no dice. You want to manually export these things, so you can export dice and handful of dice you can export row and i think that's it i'm not gonna export the abstract one i could I, i'm not gonna export the possible sites you could uh it's not private it's just protected in a sense not in the defin definition of protection when you import a base function like base dot star Base is already loaded, so the star function, the, the product, is already loaded. So I don't have to export this again. Now that I have exported dice and handful of dice, I can write dice and it works. Dice 6, it just works. Dice works. Handful of dice, you could just say dice and 2 times d6. This is a handful of dice. So everything that I need is exported. Handful of dice and I can roll to d6 and it works. So when you are in the REPL, you can uh, query the help. So when you press question mark, you move to the help question mark REPL and you can just say what function you want the help for. So this is the roll dice roll function, which is this. Roll the dice roll, which should be a subtype of abstract dice roll. So this is it. If I add more help information, like here, I'm say row a dice a rows a single dice when i ask for the help now you're gonna see that the help is is larger you have the row dice row and you have the row dice 
for that single uh, dice. We have not created any help for dice rolls the module. So if you ask for dice rolls help, what you get is the readme. So this is the readme for dice rolls, so the no doc string, and it gives you the exported names and the content of the readme. But you can just define a string before the module. So usually documenting things in Julia is just adding a string before the thing. So in this case, the module. So module for rolling dice. And now if I ask for the help again, that's already updated. Okay, so now that we have this working, let's run the tests. And to run the tests, you enter the package mode and you just write test, enter. And currently we don't have any tests, so this should be quite easy. None tests, nothing was done. All tests passed, so um, yeah, that's easy. Let's implement some tests to make things a little bit more interesting. So here, um, I'm just gonna copy an existing test. Uh, you, you might notice that the default uh, indentation is four spaces. I use two spaces for everything for a while, so not gonna change. And later we can talk about how to automatically format your code. So the tests are simple here. Uh, it's not a robust test, maybe. I'm just going through all the possible dices that we can create. <clears throat> and I'm rolling each dice uh, 10,000 plus times and I'm getting all the unique values and sorting them. Uh, and I'm hoping that that will be enough to get me all possible results. And I'm comparing to the result that it should be, which is one to n. This is the only function that we have implemented, which is the row function. And then I can test again. And now there were seven dice, seven tests, they all passed, that's it. So let's talk about structuring this uh, module a little bit better. So currently we have a single file. It is a small file, but uh, they will grow larger when you actually implement meaningful things. And how do you organize them? Uh, the way to do it, or at least the way I do it, is I mostly have nothing inside my dice rows, except things that I cannot avoid to have them uh, that to have there, and I create additional files for things that I find meaningful. Uh, frequently, like abstract things and uh, separately, and uh, if the abstract things are too large, I separate the abstract structures and the API, and you're gonna have things for each one of the concrete types that you have. Uh, of course that how you separate exactly is up to you. I'm gonna show you what to do when you actually have them separated. So let's create some files. First one I'm gonna call abstract JL. And I'm gonna move these abstract and the const and these uh, definition of function role uh, here. I'm gonna create a new file, which is uh, dice. And I'm gonna move the dice functions and structure here. And I'm gonna take the rest essentially and I'm gonna move to handful of dice. Another thing in Julia, it is very common to have hyphens on the names. Uh, underlines on the names are of course possible. And, but normally you have the only lowercase and you have uh, files separated by uh, hyphens. And I'm moving things there now. Now here in the main file, I'm gonna include things. So I'm gonna include abstract. I'm gonna include dice. And I'm gonna include handful of dice. Uh, the order makes a difference, of course, if you implement things that don't exist yet. So that's why you want to have uh, to make sure that the abstract things came first. Uh, after that, you have the concrete things. Uh, you might want to do more. Uh, you might want to be a bit more careful as well. And with this definition, we can run the tests again. So test. They are still working, so things are still working. So before moving to the other folders, let's talk about the other files. 
So I have a README with a few badges and I can review the badges in uh, VS Code. The badges are usually, the common badges are the documentation stable, the documentation dev, the build status, it's broken because there is nothing building on online, and the code coverage. These were chosen automatically by package template based on what you, the plugins that you wanted. And of course, you want to explain things here on how to install the package, how to use it a little bit, and, and maybe direct the user to click on the documentation. Uh, Julia users are accustomed to search for this badge, the docs stable badge. So you don't have to worry so much about being comprehensive in your readme, uh, but remember to be comprehensive in your documentation. So the project file already know, uh, I'm not going to go into details yet about the version. We're going to leave that for when we register the manifest file, you know, uh, there's nothing here yet and you never have to worry about this for a project. Uh, you have the license, which as I said, is the MIT license. Uh, so you have the .git ignore, which ignores a few cov uh, and mem functions. So these are for coverage and the mem is for the memory allocation uh, profiling. The manifest is ignored as well, both here and in the documentation and the documentation build. So why are we ignoring the manifest file? When we were creating an experiment, we wanted full reproducibility for our package. So we want to be very precise with everything that we are installing. But for a package, we actually want to leave the user to be responsible for the packages that they are installing. So we might say that we need the forward diff packages version 0 to 5, but the user might have another constraint uh, that's limiting the, the forward diff usage to version 3. So we don't want to constrain the versions in the manifest. We don't care about the reproducibility here. Uh, so this leads us to a common practice of having uh, when you're working on something like a PhD, you're going to have at least two repositories one for the public things, which are uh, usable by anyone, which are going to be a package, and one for your things, which are actually your usage of your own package. So essentially, you separate the project and the experiments. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it was informative to creating your package. If I have split the videos in many parts, I will definitely be reusing this uh, ending. Please like and subscribe uh, if you like the talk about today's subject. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you have more uh, specific needs or if there's something that you did not quite understand. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.